Our economy is now entering a new phase of development where our cost structure is higher as our economy matures. We have to cope with this adjustment as we cannot expect to have a first world economy with third world costs. To grow sustainably, we need to improve productivity by growing our top line and managing costs. Many of our companies understand this and are already transforming to respond to this new reality. We will support our companies by continuing to expand our economic space overseas. Our companies can, can capitalize on growth opportunities overseas, particularly in our neighborhood, the ASEAN region, by leveraging on our network of free trade agreements or FTAs. Mr. Gerard Giam is concerned that Singapore's interests may not be adequately protected as we negotiate with other countries participating in the Trans-Pacific Partnership or the TPP. Let me assure Mr. Giam that Singapore and Singaporeans are at the heart of our FTA negotiations. We proactively consult other government agencies as well as relevant stakeholders to ensure that Singaporeans benefit from our FTAs with other countries. Our approach to the, F to the TPP is no different. More specifically, Mr. Gerard Giam also asked about the trade-off between strong intellectual property or IP regime versus healthcare costs through generic, generic drugs. A strong IP regime is a critical enabler for research and development and in fact, our strong IP regime is an important factor why we have succeeded in building up a significant biomedical sciences sector over the last 15 years. At the same time, keeping drugs affordable for Singaporeans is a very important consideration. And therefore, MTI will work with MOH and other government agencies to make sure we are able to strike the right balance in our TPP negotiations. Ms. Lina Cham alluded to a spaghetti bowl problem created by overlapping FTAs. Our approach to FTAs has been explained several times. Uh, we are committed to the multilateral trading system, like the World Trade Organization. But at the same time, we see regional and bilateral FTAs as being important because they complement the multilateral approach. They allow like-minded and progressive trade partners to move ahead and liberalize earlier. Ms. Chum refers to the EU ASEAN block to block FTA negotiations. As she mentioned in her speech, this negotiation was initiated in 2007 and after two to three years did not get any, anywhere. And that's the reason why the EU decided to change tack and revert to an EU-Singapore FTA, and we successfully concluded that in December 2012. The EU is now in the process of negotiating with Vietnam and Malaysia. This approach of EU negotiating with individual ASEAN countries and then later putting it together into a regional uh, agreement is very similar to the process that Japan undertook in negotiating with ASEAN. So it's not uh, unusual for countries, for regional blocs like EU to do so on a country-to-country -country basis and then put it together later on in a regional bloc. But the key point I want to make is that in our FTA, we try to open up market access for our companies. And overall, Singapore benefits from the network of FTAs that we have negotiated. We have indeed capitalized on all these FTA agreements to strengthen our position as a key trading investment and services hub. Our companies are beginning to appreciate this and they are working closely with IE Singapore as well as our trade associations and chambers to fully utilize our extensive FTA network for preferential market access. Madam Chair, in addition to strengthening our trade linkages, we will continue to restructure our economy and to help companies transform the way they operate. DPM Taman outlined how we can keep our economy vibrant and create good jobs for Singaporeans. 